When Greg set the final tile in place and watched as the crystal clear water filled up his dream pool, he felt a sense of accomplishment. His kids' laughter echoed in the air as they eagerly awaited their first swim. By the next weekend, however, things took an unexpected turn. As the sun blazed down, neighbors, some he barely knew, began showing up with towels and sun hats in tow. It seemed word had spread quickly, and everyone wanted to cool off in the Miller's backyard paradise. The initial surprise visits were tolerated with polite smiles, but as days turned into weeks, Greg and Jean found themselves overwhelmed. But before we start, smash the like button, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you never miss out on our upcoming stories. Morning, noon, and night, there would be a knock at the door, a hopeful face asking if they could take a quick swim. The once tranquil retreat had transformed into a bustling public pool. Greg realized that while he had budgeted for chlorine and maintenance, he hadn't anticipated the social cost. Sandra asked Greg and Jean if the neighborhood kids could swim in their pool. Although they initially valued their privacy, they agreed to share the pool, touched by the children's excitement. However, as more kids arrived, balancing their generosity with their need for peace became challenging. Greg and Jean set rules to manage the situation, including no running, no loud music, adult supervision, and cleaning up. They also emphasized the need for privacy and asking permission before coming over. The kids nodded in understanding, eagerly agreeing to the terms. Over the next few weeks, laughter, splashes, and joyous shouts echoed throughout the Miller's backyard. The pool became more than just a place to swim. It was a community hub, fostering bonds and creating summer memories. But for Greg and Jean, while they cherished the joy they brought to the children, they also began to realize the intricacies and challenges of their newfound role in the community. There, amidst the crowd of children, was a medium-sized Labrador, its wet coat glistening under the sun, playfully chasing a floating ball in the pool. Children cheered it on, seemingly oblivious to the possible harm it might cause. Jean, sensing the tension in her husband, quickly stepped outside to address the situation. Whose dog is this? She inquired calmly, though her concern was evident. Sandra stepped forward, her face flushed. I'm so sorry, Jean. It's ours. The kids must have let him in. I'll get him out right away. While the dog was promptly removed, the damage was done. The trust Greg and Jean had extended was strained. The couple was left to deliberate if they could continue sharing their cherished space questioning if one careless mistake would lead to more in the future. The boy's face reddened with embarrassment and shame, and he muttered a soft, sorry, Mr. Miller. With the help of a few other kids, he coaxed the German Shepherd out of the pool, its dripping fur leaving a wet trail behind. Jean emerged from the house. Let's all remember why we have these rules in place, she said in a calm but firm tone. We wanted to create a safe and enjoyable space for everyone, but it's essential that we respect the rules set by the homeowners. We need to understand that not abiding by them can have consequences. The boy, looking downcast, nodded in understanding and started ushering the dog out of the pool. Parents who had been lounging around the area, chatting and enjoying the sunny day, now gathered their kids, whispering to them about the importance of respect and responsibility. Greg watched as the children gathered their belongings and left his property, his frustration lingering. As he inspected the pool, he couldn't ignore the ripped lining caused by the dog's presence. This was precisely why he had prohibited dogs. Now, he had to bear the cost of repairs. Greg knew he couldn't let his expensive pool go to ruin any longer. Taking matters into his own hands, Greg made a series of discreet phone calls to set his plan in motion. Soon, a massive truck parked in front of Greg and Jean's house, arousing the curiosity of the neighbors. After careful consideration, Greg made the bold decision to erect a tall fence around his backyard, effectively restricting access to the pool for the neighborhood kids. 
To emphasize his intention, he prominently displayed a sign stating that the pool was for private use only and that trespassers would face legal consequences. Greg understood that his actions might not make him popular with his neighbors. Whispers circulated at neighborhood gatherings, where the sparkling pool behind the Miller residence became the focal point of many discussions. As the days went by, the shiny new fence became a symbolic division, not just around the pool, but between differing perspectives within the community. Jean, ever the peacemaker, attempted to bridge the divide, organizing neighborhood events and potlucks, hoping to foster understanding and bring back the sense of unity the community once shared. But for Greg, every glance at the fence was a reminder of the lesson he had learned. Balancing generosity with self-preservation is a delicate dance. While he yearned for the days of laughter and shared enjoyment, he knew that sometimes boundaries, both physical and metaphorical, were necessary for preserving harmony in the long run. As autumn leaves began to fall, covering the streets of the neighborhood in a golden hue, one Saturday, a card appeared in Greg's mailbox. Opening it, he found handwritten notes from several children, doodles of the pool, and heartfelt apologies for their past actions. Another day, a basket of fresh home-baked cookies was left at their doorstep, accompanied by a note of appreciation from a neighbor. Such gestures, small yet deeply meaningful, began to mend the frayed ties within the community. Jean, witnessing the transformation, remarked to Greg one evening, perhaps this entire experience was necessary for all of us to learn and grow. Greg nodded, taking her hand, realizing that despite the challenges they faced, the outcome was a stronger, more united neighborhood. And as winter approached, Greg and Jean looked forward to another summer, hopeful for more shared moments of joy. The pool under the moonlit sky seemed almost ethereal. But for Greg, the tranquility was overshadowed by an uneasy premonition. One morning, as he inspected it, he noticed a slight discoloration around the affected area. It wasn't long before the area started to bubble and peel, hinting at more extensive underlying damage. Seeking professional advice, he called in a pool maintenance expert. The damage from the dog's claws had penetrated deeper than the surface, affecting the structural integrity of the pool lining. This damage, if not addressed soon, could result in significant water leakage, potentially causing more extensive damage to their backyard. Word spread about the issue. Some expressed sympathy, while others felt it was retribution for Greg's strict rules. The pool's state became a tangible representation of how seemingly minor transgressions could lead to significant repercussions. The sun had barely risen when Sandra and a few other neighbors, armed with pool toys, towels, and coolers filled with snacks, gathered near the Miller residence. They had heard about Greg's absence, and the news spread like wildfire. To some, it seemed like the perfect opportunity to relive the delightful pool days of the past. But without the constraints of Greg's rules, by mid-morning, the backyard was bustling with activity. Kids splashed in the water, music played on portable speakers, and the aroma of a barbecue wafted through the air. Sandra and the others had rationalized their actions, believing that a few hours of fun wouldn't harm anyone, especially with Greg away. However, as the day progressed, Without proper supervision, things quickly got out of hand. Some kids brought over inflatable rafts that were too large for the pool, causing overcrowding. The once clear water turned murky with spilled drinks and floating debris. When Jean, who had been visiting a friend in the city, got wind of the unsanctioned pool party, she was livid. Racing home, she confronted the crowd, demanding an explanation for their blatant disrespect of private property. Many were taken aback by her anger, while others sheepishly started gathering their things, realizing the gravity of their actions. News of the day's events reached Greg while he was away, adding to his mounting frustrations. The bond of trust and mutual respect that once connected the Millers with their neighbors seemed fractured beyond repair. The incident raised questions about boundaries, respect, and the consequences of acting on impulse, lessons the entire neighborhood would grapple with for some time. Under the shroud of secrecy, their covert visits began with whispers and tiptoes. Hushed laughter echoed softly as they relished in their forbidden retreat. An observant neighbor, aware of Greg's explicit rules in the previous incidents, caught them in the act. With a quick call to Jean and photographic proof in hand, 
the clandestine pool parties were exposed, Greg felt like he was trapped in a recurring nightmare. The fresh scratch was a glaring testament to the neighborhood's audacity and disrespect, and the blatant violation of his property was becoming unbearable. He decided it was time for a more definitive course of action. He installed security cameras around his property. He then called a community meeting presenting the evidence of the most recent trespass and laying out the steps he had taken. While some neighbors were visibly uncomfortable, others expressed their support for Greg's firm stance. He had to find a way to make the culprits face the consequences of their actions. The neighborhood was abuzz with chatter about Greg's bold moves. Every time he gazed at his pool, it wasn't just the ripples of water that he saw, but the ripple effect of choices made and boundaries crossed. Making the difficult decision to further restrict access, Greg installed a retractable pool cover, which not only served to protect the pool from debris, but also acted as a barrier against uninvited guests. Kids rode their bikes past his house, glancing longingly at the spot where they once played freely. Taking the first step, Greg confronted his neighbor about the pool incidents. As expected, she denied any involvement, but Greg had anticipated her reaction. It was all part of his plan. He knew the kind of neighbor she was, and he understood that there was no room for niceties in this situation. All he needed to do next was reach out to a few key people. As the day progressed, large wooden panels were offloaded from the truck. It became evident that a fence was being erected, but not just any fence. This one was tall and imposing, designed to provide maximum privacy. Furthermore, the workers were installing a state-of-the-art security system around the perimeter of the property. By evening, the miller's backyard was transformed. As days turned into weeks, speculation reached a fever pitch. Evening gatherings on porches and sidewalks often centered on the intriguing developments at the Miller residence. Finally, the day of the grand reveal arrived. Greg and Gian sent out invitations to a neighborhood gathering at their home. The Golden Envelopes promised a tour of their latest additions. As guests began to arrive, they were greeted by the impressive sight of the newly erected fence and security installations, creating an atmosphere of intrigue and anticipation. However, the real shocker awaited them inside. Upon entering, they were led to a beautifully renovated pool area, now featuring a retractable glass roof, a jacuzzi, and a poolside bar. While the message was clear that access was now limited, Greg's intent was also to show that he wasn't opposed to sharing joy, but it had to be on terms of mutual respect. The reactions were a mix of awe, envy, and understanding. Some felt slighted, but many more recognized Greg's desire to protect his sanctuary. But what nobody could predict was the grandeur of his final act. As the construction noise waned, an enormous and elaborate structure began to take shape, dwarfing the original pool. To everyone's astonishment, it wasn't just a pool expansion, but an entire water park. Complete with slides, fountains, and lazy rivers, it was an audacious move that nobody had seen coming. On a bright Saturday afternoon, Greg hosted a grand opening, but with a catch. Entry was ticketed, and the proceeds were set to benefit a local children's charity. The gambit was bold, and the neighborhood was in an uproar. Some applauded Greg's ingenuity and charity, while others saw it as a cunning move to save face. Friendships were tested, alliances shifted, and 23 Maple Lane would never be the same again. In moments of doubt or guilt, Greg reminded himself of the root cause of these events. He never wanted to go to such extreme lengths, but he felt compelled to do so, as the two of them stood under the watchful eye of the camera. Greg spoke with an air of unwavering conviction. I believe in transparency and integrity. That's why I had these cameras installed. From now on, any trespassing onto my property will be recorded. The neighbor's face turned a shade redder. The defiance in her eyes was unmistakable, and her voice was sharp as she retorted, You're invading our privacy. You can't just film children without their parents' consent. Greg calmly responded, It's my property. I have every right to ensure its safety. If you or your children have nothing to hide, then there should be no concerns. Greg continued, If there's any unauthorized access, I will have evidence. And trust me, I won't hesitate to use it. Greg's neighbor, realizing she was on the back foot, tried to switch tactics. 
You think those cameras will deter them? They're just kids looking for some fun. Fun shouldn't come at someone else's expense, Greg countered, especially after explicit boundaries have been set. If you respect those boundaries, the cameras won't be an issue. Days turned into weeks, and Greg kept a vigilant eye on the footage from his surveillance cameras. Every evening, he would review the day's recordings, searching for the indisputable evidence he needed. Then, on a sweltering Tuesday afternoon, it happened. The footage clearly showed his neighbor's children, along with a few friends, surreptitiously entering his yard. They played in the water, splashed around, and left before sunset, thinking they had gone unnoticed. The cameras, however, missed nothing. With undeniable evidence in hand, Greg invited his neighbor over the next evening. He played the footage, allowing the scenes to speak for themselves. The neighbor's face flushed with embarrassment. Greg devised a clever plan to create the illusion of being away on a weekend trip, hoping to catch neighborhood kids who might trespass into his pool. He spread rumors, rented a different car, and packed it visibly. On Friday, he and Jean pretended to leave but returned stealthily. Greg left pool toys and a slightly open gate to lure the kids. The plan worked the children, drawn by the toys in the dark, entered the pool. Greg captured footage of the intrusion and confronted the children as they played. Following this, Greg confronted his neighbor about the trespassing. She dismissed his complaints, leading Greg to take legal action. In small claims court, he presented video evidence, which led to a judgment in his favor. To prevent future issues, Greg installed a tall fence and an electronic gate. Despite backlash from some neighbors, he held firm. Greg then proposed designated community pool hours and organized monthly neighborhood pool parties to foster understanding and respect. The events were successful, creating a sense of community and teaching kids about responsibility. While some neighbors Neighbors remained resistant, most appreciated Greg's efforts and the new communal approach. Greg's actions ultimately led to improved relations, though some tensions persisted. The dialogue between Greg and his neighbor revealed mutual misunderstandings but set the stage for a more peaceful coexistence. 